same bits has brought Bomb Warrior and uh, pretty similar to old Unplayable. What do you know? What is each other? Swiss has no Elysiana. He has no ability to shuffle cards into his own deck. And so maybe if RDU can weather the storm of bombs early on, he might be able to go to a fatigue game plan and win there. This is one of my favorite matchups in the game. We're very different people, you and I. Did you like Jade Idol? Uh, did I like the card or the, the Jade Druid mirrors? Both. Um, I liked playing Jade Druid. I, I guess I could say I like Jade Idol. I appreciated that it was uh, in some ways damaging to the meta at the time. <laughs> I appreciated that it was in some ways damaging to the meta. I think that's a fair way of putting it. I, I, a fair way of putting it, just it's weird that that's the reason you liked it. Well, I mean, I, I liked playing the deck. I enjoyed playing Jade Druid on ladder, even though I knew that overall it was detrimental to a lot of players' experiences at the uh, time. I see, I see. So the fact that you inflicted harm onto others was part of the enjoyment that you got from the deck. If that's what makes you happy, then you go for it, <laughs> my dude. Found ourselves in Rich Caliber first. Key interactions happened here. You know, are you having uh, the Attorney Rover in the Town Crier early on? Um, I always feel like these cards in this matchup just don't do anything. I agree. They do very little. They are not meant for this matchup. Also very surprised that RDU is choosing to shield block here over just simply hero power. I feel like his hand is pretty good already. I feel like that's just an opportunity cost. So I think this is actually a really good point to talk about the uh, while players are just going through their early couple of turns, what the overall strategy here is for both of these players. Because for RDU, Drawing a card there, I think, is in a microcosm, kind of uh, showing what he wants to be doing in this matchup. He wants to play quickly. He's up against a bomb ray, which sees his tempo very aggressively, gets those bombs shuffled in. Maybe. So just hero powering every turn, arguably, doesn't get him through to his own answers, his own removal, and also his own tempo of his own, um, quickly enough to the point uh, that hero power would not. And that's kind of where my curiosity sets in, too, though, is the opportunity cost of a hero power. You know there's going to be a lot of them. You know it's going to happen, and you know you're going to be doing it. Absolutely. Each hero power wipes out 40% of a bomb activation. Checks out. He just gave his opponent 40% of a bomb. They're going to hit at some point. This matchup, unless Swids just blows RDU out of the water, it's going to go to the late game. Okay. Okay, so I, I think uh, I agree with you in this instance that he is probably going to be floating mana in the next couple of turns to be able to go for hero power and shield block on the same turn. But having said that, Coin Doctor Boom is very possibly going to come out on turn six, I would say. And from there on, he will have a lot more mana to spend every turn. Yeah. Very nice and easy there. Yeah, I might say something that I'm going to get a lot of hate for. <laughs> I don't think you should play that yet. Really? Elaborate. I think that hero powers, when you're Control Warrior, are extremely important. I think he's got plenty of cards right now to operate with. I think when he gets to the end of the game, he has more cards than Switz has. I think that foregoing the opportunity to get more armor costs him something here. I think you want to use your Brawl. I think you want to use your War Pass. I think you want to expend your resources and then have Maybe. Dr. Boom bridge the gap the, no, from no, that no. point when you're out to the point at the end. I do not agree with you. I th Nobody does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently I'm just a, a sheep with going with the, the popular opinion, but I think... The tempo saves you more health than the hero powers would every turn because nothing connects to your face for the whole game. I, I generally agree that that's true. I also think that getting the chance to gain seven is almost uh, chance to gain seven armor one every five hero powers or one every four is almost as good as it's one every five. One every five, but yeah, it can't be the same one twice. I was wrong. wrong. Yeah, one every five times is pretty much as good as going for the hero power just for two every single turn. I don't disagree with you. I think if this game went anywhere close to uh, Swid's favor, RDU has to play the Doctor Boom in that spot, or he's not going to recover. I think in this spot, Swid's has an Eternium Rover. Yeah. I'm, like, in the, when I was first, when I first went, uh, sorry, when Odd Warrior first started popping up, uh, or sorry, when Doctor Boom first entered uh, Odd Warrior after the Boomsday Project came out, at first, in the mirrors, I was actually thinking, Maybe you save Dr. Boom. Maybe you don't play it because four armor every turn really starts to stack up. Even then, with the Odd Warrior four hero power armor a turn, I still think you just slam Boom as early as possible. And I'm, I'm curious about the Zilliax too. I think Zilliax is a very vital tool at the end of the game. 
I was watching RDU play this on stream yesterday when you and I were, you know, watching streams and going over the matches and talking about you know, what are we going to talk about during this time. Um, I don't think RDU played fantastically in his stream set yesterday. And, and right now his play is very much emulating what I saw yesterday. And I think that he went to some very long games that were very close and competitive. And just at the very end, he was missing something small. So if you had to condense it down, what is lacking in his style of play? What is he doing wrong, you think, in a, a macro sense? I think I think it's impatience. You think he's playing too quickly with his... He's tempoing out his cards too early? I think so. Interesting. Because I would argue that this... Uh, so in terms of fatigue, he never needs to worry about fatigue. Nope. There's not a chance that he runs out of value compared to his opponent. Absolutely correct. But... I think he also has so much card draw on his deck that he doesn't need to worry about running out of stuff to do in the early game or mid game either, because he can do stuff like this to refill his hand. I would argue that that point is more reason why he doesn't need to necessarily play Dr. Boom. He doesn't run out of stuff to do, he doesn't need to worry about fatigue, and he has plenty of time. Okay. That, that three damage he's about to deal right there, doesn't do anything. Yeah. Just a point I'm making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, not yeah. saying I, I'm right. I see where you're coming from. I definitely still disagree with you. It's weird. But I see you, I see your point. But I'm a weird person, and I think anybody who's listened to me for any amount of time, including if this is the only conversation you've ever had with me, you know that that's true. That I will definitely agree with. <laughs> you got me on that one. And so since Swids couldn't get off to that beautiful lead that you normally have... You end up in this situation where he has to play a more defensive role. He has to find a setup uh, for bomb activations to become good. Just see how do you float seven mana there? Not seven mana. Kaboom! <laughs> I would have played it there too. But I hadn't played it already. Defend the gates. Yeah, I think that would have been a more prime opportunity to play it. Honestly. Well, what else was he doing? Because you said you didn't like his playing of Ziliax there as well, because it's a prime piece of removal. There was nothing else in his hand. It's okay to just take two damage. It's a 1-3. <laughs> but why would you do that when you're not doing anything else? Like You save the Zilliax for later. You're going to take oh, damage. Oh, the Zilliax. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I mean you, you don't have to play the Zilliax, but the, the Dr. Boom. Then otherwise, you're just floating set six well, I would play the Dr. Boom one when I floated seven. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think the coining of it, a little early for my taste. One, uh, yeah, okay. I feel like I've, my point got lost there. It probably did. <laughs> it tends to do that. I, listen to who you're talking <laughs> to right now. <laughs> listen to everything I just said that I sternly believe. <laughs> lordy, lordy. I'm even aware that it sounds crazy. Mm. I kind of like it. Really? The antagonistic part of it is part of the charm for you. That's admirable. Is that true? <laughs> Much like you and playing J. Drew in a ladder back. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, I still remember those first few weeks of the <laughs> frozen throne. Two mana innovate, mm. five mana plague. Remember that time I said you shouldn't play Doctor Boom as early as possible. <laughs> <laughs> the good old days. <laughs> nice tempo play here for Swids. Finally, the threat of some damage. Yeah, but as we have seen. Time after time after time, it ain't gonna stick. This is what Dr. Boom does best. He just kills pretty much everything, every single time. Apart from that turn, you're over. Well, almost an interesting spot. If he had the ability, for Swids that is, to have an, just that one extra mana for this, Oh, he has Shield Slam in hand. Okay, never mind. This is a very interesting spot. This is a critical moment here for Swiss. Wow, that seemingly insignificant Eternium Rover on board is actually pretty good here. It forces out an Omega Devastator? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, don't know. I, I guess it just gets killed off fairly easily. Well, I mean, Omega Devastator, I think, is it's an, an extremely important, important card. Like, I agree. A lot of times you have to use Omega Devastator right away. And that's fine. It's a very good play. But this is, in my opinion, one of the prime endgame effects to be using, is if you can use all your other resources first, you end up on this spot. RDU agrees with you as well, to such a degree that he is bouncing back his Omega Devastator 
overbouncing the archivist Elisiana. Is this the play? Um, I'm curious about it. I want to say no, but then again, you know, both players have drawn fairly aggressively. I think I like this. And Swids does not have an archivist Elisiana in the main deck. So I think in game number one, RDU is absolutely so free to use Brewmaster choices. simply for value. Yes. Sake. Given that there is no ability to shuffle cards, or, well, into his own deck for Swids. He right. can just shuffle bombs into his opponent's deck. The reason Ten RDU's extra cards always wins fatigue by a million miles. And the reason that RDU is free to make this play is because it's an open deckless format. They, they can see what the other person Excellent point. Uh, is possible Maybe. of doing, not necessarily what they are no, doing no, 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 no. in games two and three. You have to get some more information to figure that out. Yes. You I mean, usually could piece it together, but he knows in game one that Swids doesn't have Elysiana. Otherwise, he would not be making that play ever. Well, game two and potentially game three is where things are going to go a little bit crazy because Hardy like has a secondary deck with Deathwing and a tertiary deck with Mecha Thune in there. His control warrior builds are fairly nutty, it's fair to say. Yeah, it gets a little, it gets a little crazy. I like it though. Wow, Ardu is playing at lightning fast speed, and this is also just Ardu in a nutshell. You know, we talked a bit about Fino and and uh, oftentimes being quick paced to play. Ardu streams a ton of Hearthstone, yes, and he's been playing Hearthstone since the beginning of of competitive play. Being in this spot here, it's really not a surprise to see him do this because he very much relies on that practice to guide him through. Yes. I feel like I would, however, say RDU, while he is one of the most accomplished players of all time, one of the players I respect the most, he is one of the more fallible players, I will say. He is more prone to make mistakes than some of the other players. I feel like RDU has to work very hard to be at the top level of Hearthstone, which he does. He works incredibly hard. I have a huge amount of respect for him as a player. However, I think it's not quite so deep of an inherent understanding of the game as we see from players in the league, like uh, Kalento or Purple, for example. And so slowing down, I think, is what he needs to be doing here, just to make sure he's not missing anything. <laughs> it's just funny. <laughs> <laughs> the big, just a bulldozer. Big digger is. The true sleeper of the set. The one thing I did, I will say that I saw RDU doing yesterday that I think cost the most was using Omega Devastators in spots where he didn't need to be using them. That's and here, learn his lesson. And here, he has clearly had that practice pay off to some degree, where he has saved it and saved it and saved it. Ooh. Interested in that play? I think I think a hero would probably just. In, I think I just wall part. I think so as well. I think the weapons project is too important to kill off the range caliber. We've only seen one. We haven't seen any wrench calibers from Swiss side. So. This would be a good time. Or did we see it on turn four? Plan. I can't remember back then. We were talking about some nonsense about whether or not you play Doctor Boom as. Oh, this is here. interesting. Keeping full ten cards in hand as Swiss is still doing nothing. Turn after turn after turn. Burning a card here for RDU is actually reasonable. The cards that are left don't really have effect on the game. He's already got Dr. Boom in play. He's already got Archivist in hand. He's already used Brewmaster. There's not really anything left to draw that matters. And so he's going to keep his hand full to fight against bombs. It's part of it. Swids is also keeping his hand completely full. However. Or just, um, rather I should say, he's not doing anything this whole game. He's just hero power pass, turn after turn after turn. Is he just saving everything for when he finds Dr. Boom? Well, so I, I think it's an interesting perspective from Swid's side, where the fact that he doesn't have Dr. Boom, uh, it, it really does, I think, lay into the game plan he has where he can generate and keep tempo for a long enough time. I feel like his game plan right now, because RDU has used the Brewmaster, so is choices. to wait until Elysiana gets drawn and then figure out a way to get bombs into the deck. Yeah, which yeah, means okay. he will need loads of removal and loads of extra life because he will be into fatigue and going quite deep into it, yeah. where RDU will not. I'll agree with you there. I think that's definitely the reason why. Holding back as much as possible. I was wondering if he was saving back the Elec and the Wrench cali Caliber to go Elec, Wrench Caliber, and Clockwork Goblin all on the same turn. But I think he's happy taking the likely five damage off of this one bomb, and like you said, saving the rest for post Elysiana.
And Adi, you know, as you pointed out, not too much he really wants left from his deck. So he's just going to overdraw again. Yeah, I think this purpose. is smart. I think yeah. this is wise. Yeah, because Ardu is also not expending resources, which means Squids doesn't have clean kills, which means that Ardu doesn't have to refill resources, which means that at any point Ardu wants, he can use Omega Assembly, fill his hand back up, and try to protect himself from bombs once the board is secured at all. Such an interesting playstyle from Swids because we've seen consistently throughout the day that just playing your cards as Bomb Warrior is very powerful. You curve into Doctor Bo uh, Blastmaster Boom and you just go super wide on the board. Yeah, but I because he's realizing exactly Elysiana can mess that up, he's taking an incredibly conservative game plan. This is weird to look at, but this is very weird to look at. I think this is I think this is the right call. Again, are you trying to protect himself from an all-in? bomb situation, Swid's trying to create a bomb situation, and he's realizing that shake of the head, that's not going to be possible because RDU understands that. Yeah. And now, what, Dr. Boom bottom two cards? You don't like to see That's that. also a shake of the head. Yeah. Maybe... Th no, 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 no. Now, that being said, Swid's has seen a second weapons project get burned away. Okay. So I'm curious if there's something he can do with like setting up a wrench caliber. Yeah, just equip it to spend mm. the mana. That's and then having something happen the following turn. Has Harrison been played as well for RDU? Because that definitely changes it, right? I mean, there's only one card left in his deck that isn't a bomb at this point, right? Those we'll find out. Artie's got 10 cards in hand, so he can't draw Harrison this turn, so he'd have yes. to have it yeah. in. Oh, that's a good point. That's a very good point. Okay. Swid's going to draw the last two. Hey, there he is. Oh, Boom was literally the last card in his deck, with only the bomb being shuffled in as well. to you there as well. The fact that the bomb was overdrawn there is quite important because it means there's yes. one card left in his deck to disrupt the chain, potentially. Yeah, so he wants Swids to all in the spot and then to have the chain disrupted by the single card and then to use the Omega Assembly. Is that correct? Okay. Oh, unless the last card is a bomb as well. I guess the last card could just be an extra bomb that was shuffled in by Swids. But I don't think it was, because he's been so conservative with his bombs throughout the whole game. But either way, a lot of damage going to be coming through here for Swids. I feel like this may be a foregone conclusion, though. I'm almost out of cards! That's it! I'm out of cards! It was Harrison. <laughs> And it was the bottom card. That's pretty sad for RDU, given that he had to take all the bomb damage here before he can play Elysiana. Yeah, well, RDU does know that the last cards in Swid's hand are pretty much exactly what they are. Yeah, I think he'll have been keeping track. And so he is free to just solve this puzzle, I think. There's going to be the kicker of, you know, what Dr. Boom Mad Genius can do. But that's pretty much it. And this was a strange, this felt like a, an inconsistent game plan, I guess is what I should say from Swids, because for turns and turns, he was just hero power passing, not playing any of his bomb cards, presu presumably to play around Elysiana. Obviously, you don't want your opponent to replace the bombs in their deck with a new deck of cards. But then he just went all in, which means now that, what, Blastmaster Boom isn't active? Well, I think the, I think the game plan will be played. I, I think the game plan was, was still always get Dr. Boom and have time to use it. Just failed to draw it. But, you know, I, I, I feel like that winning a push without Dr. Boom is not really possible. I think winning a control game without it is possible, but I don't think winning a control game without Elysiana when your opponent has one is possible. And so I think everything just lined up for Swids in a way where he got put into this position, and what could he do? And this really is the difference in the decks coming into, becoming apparent now. 
with Swids having nothing to shuffle into his deck. And for RDU here, it really just does not matter what he's shuffling in. It's just to prevent that fatigue. Spirit of the Rhino works with uh, Dr. Boom in mechs, correct? Uh, I think so. Can't say I've ever actually tried that interaction, but my brain's saying yes for whatever round. Well, I think that was just a bunch of boys, just things you can throw in play. Yeah, nothing particularly special. It's typical Elysiana. Yeah. Steph. And yeah, the classic Doctor Boom is as good as you're gonna get here. Wow. There you go. The final hurrah from Swids, it really feels like at this point, as we can clearly see Ardy is just kind of running away with this one. Short of a miracle off of the delivery drone. Mechathoon? Is that ever a thing? Oh. Like, I think it was Mechathoon, no, Double that... Omega Devastator, and then Zilliax Brawl. I mean, that's the one way that you could get this, is with Mechathoon, but it has to be literally right here, I think. No. And that's not it. Wrong 10 drop. And it does just beg the question of what went so wrong for Swids in this game. It felt like either way, whether he went for the bombs before or after Elysiana, it was difficult for it to have been working out. Or unlikely. I, I think it's easy to look at this game and go, RDU had Dr. Boom and Swids did not. Yeah. But what I really think it was is that Swids just didn't have Dr. Boom. He is much more reliant on it, I think, than RDU is. Really? Yeah, how does he win this control game with without an Elysiana? Well, he doesn't go for the control game. He, he goes for the... I'm saying, how does he run RDU out of stuff? The whole deck for RDU just blows stuff up. It's the entire deck. Yeah, well, you just try and go for a big turn at the end with... Or at some point in the game with the Elix and just shuffling in a whole bunch of bombs and hope that that kills them. Or just go for a really early Blastmaster boon that they can't deal with. I don't know. I feel like either way, it's going to become a lot easier when he does get his own copy uh, of Elysiana put in there. In addition True. to Ken Bloodhoof, Gromash Hellscream, the Boom Reaver, and another Elec. I'm just looking at the uh, the tertiary plan for RDU, which includes Mechathun. It's a weird list. <laughs> I don't know. Swids beats it. Does he? Yeah, as this one's wrapping up, we're really just wondering how RDU will proceed because both of his secondary and tertiary decks tech out Elysiana, which could be pretty detrimental if he's... Well, I mean, it basically means if he doesn't get the Mechathune game plan, he loses. He needs to win with Mechathune if he switches there. Swids is done! And after a long-winded battle, RDU shows that Elysiana is, in fact, important. Two matchups that will go to fatigue state. What easily comfortable. Just wasn't happening there for Swids. Yeah, there was just nothing doing there for him. And that's got to feel bad because I know Swids is one of the players, uh, there's kind of a, a contingent of French players who are all control warrior fanatics. It's just all they've played for the longest time. Uh, they were playing a whole bunch of Dead Man's Hand Warrior when that was. Uh, I've even run into a variant that plays Mechathune at some point in the game. Yeah. And its final three cards are The Undertaker, Whirlwind, and Devastate. I think Yala might be bringing that list as well here this week. Someone's definitely brought that exact list that you're talking about and here. It's quite spectacular to watch because the first time it happened oh, yes. to me, I just went, why the heck did they just play Mechathune? <laughs> I was like, are they really just going to beat me up? <laughs> and the answer was no. They're going to play Undertaker, Whirlwind, and then devastate their own Undertaker, which has the death rattle of the Mechathune. Big dummy. You big dummy. That's exactly what I was. Job's done. And now already, the uh, the tech decisions from Swids are starting to look pretty apparent already. As you can see these two hands, Grom and Ken, two of the original classic Hearthstone badass cards, are going to be very powerful here. Yeah, it's a it's a very uh, you know big throwback to like the days of yore with Control Warrior, where like at some point in the game you turned the corner and had just raw efficiency of your cards, like. They were just so big and dumb yeah. that there wasn't really a, a good way to fight them. The, the best way to fight them was to kill them before they got to that point, right. which the entirety of the deck was dedicated to preventing. It was called Wallet Warrior, right? Like the bottom half of the deck was just like eight legendaries back <laughs> in the day. It was crazy. 
Because, I mean, well, you didn't have Dr. Boom or any other fatigue win conditions. You just had to eventually kill your opponent. And Swids is absolutely going to be trying to eventually kill his opponent. Yeah. And I think that in this game, the, the tempo game plan that you were alluding to in the previous one uh, certainly has a much better chance of winning. I think, I think Swids was going for a spectacular finish and you know perhaps even just a foregone conclusion at a certain point in that game. Um, but in this one with Grom and with, uh, with Karen in hand, he has got a pretty major push that can happen in the middle stages. As the pump yeah, off the top early. of the Swids, you really yeah, hate to see that with the last master boom in hand. And I think, however, even though that happened for Swids and was obviously a pretty poor outcome, I love the fact that he's just coming in swinging with that wrench caliber. He needs to get this hand moving quickly. He's not messing about with fatigue uh, quite yet because uh, RDU is still at an advantage in that state because he is playing a youthful brewmaster to bounce his Elysiana back. Swids needs to make up for that deficit of 10 cards by tempoing so out turn after turn, choices. which is exactly what he's trying to do. Yeah. I think in this game, you are not going to see RDU use Brewmaster in the same fashion. I agree. It's game number one. Um, and I think in this game, that what you're going to see is a lot more resources expended. Like, unlike the previous game, where I feel like RDU is free to just take his time, I feel so like in this game, the, the amount of value that he can generate from Dr. Boom is quite vital. I, mm. I feel like in the last game, it was more vital to Swids than it was to RDU. Swids failed to find it. I feel like in this game, it's much more vital to RDU than it is to Swids. Yes, I agree. He's going to have to fight pressure, actual real pressure at some point. And, like, difficult to remove pressure. These are not just, like, the highest statted minions that Swids can put in. These are minions that are tricky to kill off in one go. Like, Ken Bloodtooth is very annoying. Boom Reaver summoning out the two minions at the same time, one of which gets Rush, obviously, as well, could just make it a nightmare for RDU to be able to kill off everything so every single time. Yeah. I, I feel like he could kill the stuff very easily. He's just out of stuff after that. Yeah, okay. Um, and so I think that's really the, the one factor that he has to keep in mind is you know, when can he take damage, when can he not, what kind of turns can he and can he not risk. And shield slamming a 1-2. That's aggressive. I do not believe him. With a weapons project in hand as well, it's not like his hand was just, you know, had no arm again. What in the world? I am genuinely confused by that. What what was it that he shield slammed? I didn't see as a one two. It was the one two. It was just the a town, town crier. Oh, it was specifically to make room for this play. Okay. Okay, I I can almost believe it now. Did because it? he had fully intended to warpath this turn. Okay. He would have too many cards in hand. Clear out one hand space. But he could have just played other cards. Like, what could he have just played though? Yeah, I guess you Maybe. don't want to play the Devastator, you don't want to play Brewmaster. Ziliax, he wouldn't have had mana. I mean, if this was his game plan, and it is... Well, it clearly was. Okay. Just interesting to me. So, Town Crier is to thin the deck of a Rush minion and then draw. And it says two armor, this Acolyte will stick around for a card regardless. That was a well-sequenced turn. Yeah, it's exactly the amount he needs to not overdraw a single card. I st I think, given his game plan of going for the Warpath next turn, this was the best way to execute it. I still am not convinced that it was necessarily the best way to, to uh, approach these couple of turns overall. Because Shield Slam is really valuable. Like, if he was convinced Maybe he needed to go for the Warpath this turn, okay, I understand your thinking. You want to clear a card out of hand. But with the amount of big threats that Swids has, Every shield slam is important. I, I guess with the, the executes and the brawls thrown in there as well, he might be able to get it done to remove everything either way. Nice second turn here for RDU. I think I'm more tempted to Zilliax. Like than I am to expend the rewards. Yeah. Precision. Especially when you can get the magnetize as well. Yeah, you actually get a full restoration here. And also the 4-5 uh, fares pretty nicely against the opposing. Yeah. Very could nice. Have, could have seen a trade there, um, as opposed to going face with the 1-2. Uh, the Just to set up for a value trade with your 4-5 um, Eternium Rover. Unity. Precision. 
Out militia commander almost certainly. Yeah. Well, I guess the weapons project, but I guess we can save that. But... The old wrench caliber. The old wrench caliber. I already bought an extra base damage. That's true. What a god. A completely unimportant healed back face damage. But just imagine when it's exact fatigue lethal when Speed is about to deliver the final blow, and we'll be like, oh my god. Well, I got healed back by Celiac. <laughs> hey, there we go. We were talking about the importance of the old wound. And here it is. Are you very happy to see that indeed? Although, would you have played Dr. Boom there? Had you drawn it? I just stressed at the start of this game how much more important I believe it is because he has to expend more removal than he did in the previous game. So yes, I did Darok. Last game was an exception to the rule. <laughs> Fun making fun of you. <laughs> Objectively a good time for the whole family. You know, I actually do find it fun when people make fun of me as well because I take such a harsh so stance back choices. as well. Which I also find very fun, Ooh, is being as brash and stubborn as possible. I enjoy you guys making fun of me because it makes me feel like I have value to the community, <laughs> which I clearly don't. <laughs> With his face right now is uh, a feeling of what's happening in this game, where he knows he's at a disadvantage due to the Elysiana difference. Yeah. That I find kind of interesting that Ardu uh, decided to trade in the 2-2. Two -two, um, because he didn't want to save the Death Rattle, because he could have saved the 2-2 two -two, uh, Mechanical Dragon and then magnetized on a Beryllium Nullifier, so that it's a kind of two-tiered threat. It's like, you know, because this way it loses, to, or it, sorry, it dies to the uh, Omega Devastator, which is a reason to hold on to just the 2-2. Two -two. I don't know. It, it's interesting. I feel it was close. It was close, because having threats that are more difficult to remove is how you seize him more effectively. I think it's the Eternium Rover is the reason. Because he has the Eternium Rover nullifier. Okay. Yeah, yeah, You want to magnetize it onto that. Yeah, you, you have an efficient target with the mix-in of a hero power. Fair enough. It's like, that's the one-two punch. And then also, sometimes, one of these sticks around. And you get the, uh... I was trying to think of something else other than one-two punch, but I guess you just punch really hard. You just <laughs> Consecutive regular punches. Yeah, it's getting real tough for Swids now. Yeah, and this, uh, to, be, to our use credit as well, I was looking at, uh, you know, saving the Beryllium Nullifier to magnetize onto the uh, Mechanical Dragon Loom, but he, like, the fact that he baited out, I suppose, sort of baited out the Omega Devastator, meant that now this Beryllium Nullifier is so difficult for Swids to deal with. He's just going to keep chipping away the board turn after turn. And so that's really my question for RDU, is how does he... Uh, you know, really snowball that effect to the best degree. Right. Well, that's the problem with Control Warrior as opposed to Bomb Warrior. It's much more difficult to capitalize on the board control you have. Or rather, that it capitalizes oh, okay, rather then. unspectacularly. And it's basically a valid way of saying it. It just keeps blowing stuff up. It's like, hey, I blew up a lot of stuff. I'm going to keep blowing it all up. <laughs> that's what I enjoy about Control Warrior. It's not so much that I defeat my opponent, it's that I've neutralized their attack. I enjoy that. Right, so they can't do anything. It's not just that you've beaten them, it's you've broken their morale. So. <laughs> and you have a go at me for like the Jade Idol. Well, no, I liked Jade Idol as well. Remember, I said I like when people have that push back at me. I was oh, pushing right. back at myself in that instance as well. Right, sorry, was I not giving you enough flat? Super next level insulting. <laughs> no, that's called talking to yourself and being insane. Touche. <laughs> Defend the gates! Now, it 
looked an awful lot like he was just going to tempo out the last master boom. <laughs> okay, as Swiss does have the Mecha Thune now, which he got, which... Yeah, that is weird. It's like Mecha Thune in a deck, even discovering Mecha Thune, if the deck is not specifically crafted to make Mecha Thune a win condition, it almost never works. It's incredibly difficult to get yourself into a board state where you're not dead, and you've played all your cards, and you have nothing on board, and you've drawn your whole deck. It's so many requirements to me. But now, it's something to consider. If there's a matchup where it happens, it really is right, this one. Right, this is the one where you, I would say it has a chance of working. The, the trick to it for me is that Swids, you know, has now included a copy of Archivist Elysiana in the deck. So it just takes that much longer to actually get to that point. Oh yeah, of course, because you can't just leave it in your hands and not play it. You, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was, I was, cause I was, I was thinking in my head you could just not play it, but obviously... Yeah, so you have to be yeah. fighting on, on even footing here. And so the fact that RDU has found Dr. Boom, which in this game I firmly believe is much more important than the last one. The Lysiana is like almost becoming a liability for Swids. It's just a weird juxtaposition. So it turns out that the nuts off of uh, RDU's Hecklebot was to pull out Elysiana, which is what the entire deck is kind of built around. I think that would have been better for Swids, yeah. I think he would have a much more realistic chance of winning if he did not have Elysiana in his deck right now. Really? Because he just mecha -thunes. I think the mecha is much more, more possible. The one thing that's missing from RDU's deck is the silence. The thing is, I think you're wrong, but I'm not certain. Ah, yes, my favorite argument. <laughs> I, th I think the more likely win condition here for Swids is still comboing at, at the effect point? of... No, no, no. I, I think that it's more likely that he is able to pull together the Elysiana and the bomb effects. For RDU, he just pulled out Elysiana from his deck. He can youthful Brewmaster it back. That's a Boom Reaver copy. If Swids cannot kill it. Oh, is it a copy? Yeah, Boom Reaver creates a copy and oh. puts it into play. Oh, well, that's great then. Yeah, we love it's just a 7-7. Seven, seven. It's just two war golems. Maybe... The... No, 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 no. Yeah, it's awesome. Boom Reaver is one of my favorite cards in the whole set. That's actually pretty good. I was, I haven't even... It's just a big, I've never put thing. this card in my deck. And wow. Swid's just got big, dumb tempo out of this game. That's lethal on board as That's long as RDU recognizes board. it. And indeed, he does. Two decisive games against Swid's. One of them, I think, due to the... Very unfortunate early draw yeah. uh, and pan out from Swids. This one, I think, was due to RDU just having the goods at every step of the way. He really did. And